What is up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we have a review of Les Chants du Hasard and their new album, Livre Troisième. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Les Chants du Hazard is a solo French orchestral and operatic blackened gothic metal project we have previously covered on MetalTrenches.com with 2017's Livre Premier and the 2019 follow-up Livre Seconde. My first interactions with Mastermind Hazard led to him describing the project as, and again, I apologize for utterly butchering these names, Modest Mussorgsky, Sergei Prokoviev, and Richard Strauss filtered through Over and Emperor. Now, if you're expecting Karish Angren or Dimu Borgir, it's time to readjust your expectations. This project is first and foremost grounded in its classical roots, and as such is composed entirely in an orchestral manner. No guitars, no drum kit, the only metal elements come in the atmosphere and some of the more black metal inspired vocals to go alongside the more traditional operatic ones. The results here being an eight movement cohesive experience, one that despite its harsher moments feels absolutely worthy of the world's most grand and opulent opera houses. An album that makes me feel like I should don a powdered wig, pale makeup, and some dapper 17th century clothing to enjoy fully. And if it already wasn't impressive enough that all of this vast instrumentation from the brass to the percussion comes from just one man, I'm even more impressed with Hazard's dedication to constant improvement. I recall when the second album was coming out and he sent it to me, he even had it with the line of like, hey, I thought about some of the stuff you said and I was really working on it here. And I was just kind of like totally humbled by that. Very cool. This is a dude who's just always trying to make his music bigger and better and more impressive, more dramatic, more powerful. And I have to say, right off the bat, as a result, I think this is his finest hour so far. It really feels like a culmination of all of his previous craft. It's his most cohesive, dynamic, and engaging composition so far. It is just massive. Now, far be it from me, a complete plebe when it comes to, like, orchestra and musicals, like... I've, I've been on Broadway, I've, I've seen some stuff, I've listened to some classical music, I enjoy my Beethoven and my Bach, Moonlight Sonata happens to be one of my favorite songs ever. But yeah, I'm far from an expert, so I will just do my best to kind of describe how this music hits you. Speaking of which, Atmosphere is the name of the game here. This is a very just classy sounding album, but again, huge. And not like bombastic or like silly or goofy. Again, in the way that you think of like Dimo Borgir as this big like boom, 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 like just constantly like pounding down your door. And Karish Angren has more of this kind of like jovialness to it, this kind of like silliness, this weirdness to it. Really very little to none of that here. It is just straight up sitting down and like in the rows of seats the, with the red like velvet chairs and enjoying a, a show you, you're hearing the orchestral pit play their thing and that's the experience plus some crazy black metal vocals <laughs> yeah most of the time it's just like a straight up opera there are a lot of dynamics here too though lots of counterplay between the big brass and the more kind of like twinkling playful elements of flutes and xylophone. You get sudden eruptions of the raspy wails and snarls. At times, these do kind of sound a little bit flesh god. Maybe part of it, too, is my mind is just making the connection because especially with that picture of Hazard and then comparing that to the stage costumes of flesh god, there, there's some comparisons there. But again, ultimately, the, those two could not sound less alike. It's music that's vast yet very understated at the same time. There's such a subtlety to all the compositional elements. Like you really do need to like sit down and like kind of pick apart all of the little elements that are happening. And again, the idea that this is just one guy playing all of these instruments is just insanity because it does just sound like you're listening to a full on orchestral pit. This isn't like, you know, plenty of bands will have like a violinist come in or they'll have a saxophone player come in or a trumpet player or whatever. And that's always cool. 
But this is just so far beyond that because it's like, imagine somebody called in like all of those people plus like 20 more all playing like French horn and all of that. <laughs> you got the, the big bass drum player that's just dedicated to just pounding on that thing. And that that's the experience you can expect from this. And again, just all from one dude. It's it's crazy. Obviously, he's not doing all the vocals here. At least I don't think so. <laughs> but it really is impressive. And then even as something that you can put on in the background, too, because classical music is kind of my favorite thing when I'm doing work. I'll tend to put on something more instrumental, something a little bit more subdued. And classical is usually great for that. And while it does work best as kind of one cohesive experience that you're listening to from start to finish, it does have little standout moments, kind of what I would <laughs> compared to hooks with uh, any other music that I tend to review on this channel. Like Chant 3 opens with little horns and something like that, whatever. And it, it's very kind of like it's it's infectious. It gets stuck in your head the way that they're playing those. And then you get this other vicious blast of snarls, like feral creatures. They're often kind of layered on top of each other too. So it's like a pack of wolves or maybe like a Jekyll and Hyde thing kind of going on. There are some little like Danny Elfman sounding parts too when the chorals come in like on Chant 4. Again, it never gets like to that Danny Elfman like crazy, you know, just out of control, <laughs> kind of goo everything's twisted and sideways, Tim Burton-y vibe. But there, there are elements of that on here. And also like I'd say it gets most whimsical on this song around the four minute mark where it's got this very kind of carnival-esque portion. And yeah, that is the one time probably on the entire album where things get a little bit like almost goofy. Like it's still serious, but it's, it's, I don't know how to say it. You know, that's the one moment where things kind of go more into that realm. There's also this kind of like Godfather-esque sounding part towards the middle of Chant 7. It's got like similar instrumentation. It just reminds me a lot of that soundtrack and particularly the theme song to that, but with its own little twist and again with some more weird experimental and aggressive vocals on top of it. But yeah, the main thing here is that it's just very dramatic. It, it's so much so that it it's constantly like conjuring this story up in your mind. And I'm sure that Hazard ha kind of has his own storyline that he has mapped out for this. But I kind of like l sometimes like to avoid knowing what that is and just let the music take me where it does. And it's not even just feeling with this, like plenty of the music I review on this channel it definitely strikes me emotionally and I get, you know, I get angry, I want to punch stuff, <laughs> I get I get melancholy, I get sad. But with this, it goes an extra step where I'm literally like, it's like there's a projector in my mind, like playing these very profound images, these very detailed ideas of what this could look like. And so as a result of that, I feel like this would be great with a visual performance. Like I would love to go see a version of this that includes like people on stage in crazy costumes and kind of that 17th century vibe going on with that too, but also adding maybe some more metal imagery to that. Not getting silly with it, not getting like too ham-fisted, but just enough where it's like a weird clash. That just feels like the next logical step for this project. And at the bare minimum, even just like getting picked up for a movie or something. This is just very soundtrack worthy music as well. So basically what I'm saying is get this man to Carnegie Hall, at least. Ultimately, too, I'm not going to rank this one because I, I am no, like, not that I'm an expert in general on, on any kind of music, really, but especially with classical, like, to me, it just feels weird for me to rank this one. This isn't something that I listen to on a, like, daily basis. I think the best thing I can really say in that realm is just basically this is not going to be for everyone, but it's definitely worth a shot if you want to try something different or happen to enjoy classical music, definitely give it a listen. So yeah, check them out. You can find them on Bandcamp. Again, Les Chant du Hazard, and this particular album is called Livre Troisième, but he also has two other albums you can check out there as well in the meantime. And then based on what I've talked about here, what I've played, maybe you've gone and checked some of it out and come back or you're already aware, let's have a conversation in the comments. What do you think of this album? And then also, if you do enjoy classical like I do, what is your favorite classical composer or song? And then, hey, stick around. I got plenty more videos coming right after this one. 
More album reviews, tier lists, interviews with bands on the podcast, you name it, we've got it. So plenty of reasons to subscribe, if you have not already. Also, chat with us on Discord and support on Patreon. Even just a dollar a month makes a huge difference, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.